The following program contains incessant calls to battle with the unsavory. If you suffer from squeaky clean handedness, Randall might not be right for you. Check with your local Pharisee. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the show. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about today, but it's going to be great. Don't go away. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left-wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. The man who creates social tension just by walking into the room, Randall Terry. That's what I'm talking about. As I said from my piano, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about, but it'll be good. You've turned to the right place, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go away. Look at this woman. She frightens me. I am here at the great Dr. Gosnell's clinic. And it breaks my heart that the place where he did all this good work has been shut down. But I hope we can keep it as a shrine for young women forever, for choice. Welcome to today's program, friend. All right, I found a couple things to talk about. Let's talk about Wrigley's caffeine gum. Look at that snazzy container. Alert, energy, caffeine gum. Well, the FDA has not approved caffeine in our food chain since I believe the 1950s when they approved caffeine being in certain soda drinks, soda pops. Now, there's a lot of people putting caffeine in a lot of food, all right? It's been unregulated, which that's another discussion. I don't think that the federal government should be deciding for us if they wanna regulate the caffeine in our food, okay? If they can regulate that, what else are they gonna to wanna to regulate in our food? <laughs> Note that they won't deal with the, the um, are they called MGOs, that where they molecularly alter the, the food chain so that you can spray chemicals on corn when it's growing and the corn won't die, but the bugs will, but all those chemicals are in the corn. And we wonder why we have so many diseases. The FDA is not regulating that, but they want to regulate caffeine in gum, right? Now, that'd be the kind of thing you could just be mildly disgusted with. But pretty much on the same day that Wrigley's decided to pull the gum, all right, after discussions with the FDA, to show respect for the FDA, and out of fear for what might be getting into the hands of children, because if you've got one pack of this Wrigley's gum in your pocket. It's like having four cups of coffee in your pocket. Ooh. On the same day, the FDA approved the over-the-counter sale of Plan B to 15-year-olds. Now, I want you to just stop and let the full weight of this sink in. A 15-year-old girl cannot buy Wrigley's caffeine gum because the FDA thinks it's a bad idea, but she can get a chemical that will kill her baby, okay? But don't worry, sweetheart, it's caffeine free. I'm gonna take a break, when we come back, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about Plan B, its side effects, the intrusion of the federal government, and Big Brother coming to get us. Do we, I've still got that much time left? Mean I can keep talking? Well, let me keep talking then. Let's go back to that camera right there. All right. Plan B is kind of a nickname for the morning after pill or the morning after pill, a nickname for Plan B. And its primary function is to prevent ovulation, okay? Plan B, Plan A was not to get pregnant. That didn't go so well because our culture is crazed with immorality. And so a woman, a young woman, a 15, 16 year old who is involved in statutory rape perhaps, decides that that last night of fornication might result in her being pregnant 
And so she's going to go to the store and buy plan B. The primary purpose of plan B is to prevent ovulation, as I said, but it also prevents implement implantation. Implantation is what happens when the ovum and the sperm unite and then a new human life exists and it's growing as it drifts down the fallopian tube and then implants in the uterine wall. In other words, plan B is also an abortifacient. It is a human pesticide. We have friends who were on the pill and I was begging them. I was saying, you, you don't want to be on the pill, all right? Using birth control is one thing, but an abortifacient is another, like an IUD. Should I, should I explain all this? I should take a break, all right? I'm, I'm now drifting down a rabbit trail that could alter your life. Literally, I'm gonna tell you a story when we come back about a relative of mine, okay? Who's alive and not dead because I stuck my nose in someone else's business. Oh, the nerve of that man. Wait. Did I tell you that I've got a new book? Every day in America, over 3,500 babies are torn apart by abortion. Shouldn't all babies like this living unborn child have the right to life? Baby killing will only end when Americans see the truth of what abortion does to innocent children. You can help end this Holocaust by showing the truth of abortion in your area with a Face the Truth tour. Go to facethetruthamerica.com to set up a Face the Truth tour in your area. The babies and their mothers will be eternally grateful. In the 1980s, banks introduced designer checks. When my buddy George Johnson inquired at the bank, they had nothing for pro-lifers. So the Johnsons created beautiful pro-life bank checks showing babies with a strong pro-life message. You can speak out for life with every check you write, whether personal or business checks. Be a voice for babies with these pro-life checks. Go to prolifecheckguy.com to see more. That's prolifecheckguy.com. How would you like to be able to reach hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of potential customers with your product or your company or your web-based business? Well, you can do that right here on this show. Every single day, we get phone calls or letters or orders online from states all over the country where people are watching this television show. Right now, we are seen in 45 cities at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time every night and then a rerun again at 12.30 midnight. You can reach them using this show at advertising rates that are so inexpensive, it would blow your mind. So, if you're interested, contact us at the phone number that you see on the screen or the email address, and we can talk about how you can grow your business and help support this show. Welcome back to the program, friend. All kidding aside, I am so thrilled. I, I some of you are authors. And there's nothing like when you've, your, your first book is printed, but then, you know, the next book is exciting and the next book is exciting. I'm excited, I admit it. This is my latest book, it's called Dragon Slayers, 220 something pages. Um, been working on it for 14 years. It's gone through four or five heavy rewrites. Can I read just one or two of what the comments are and then I'm gonna talk to you about Plan B. I'll read two of them. The first one is from a psychotherapist the second one is from a retired CIA agent, officer. A fascinating and powerful journey that rivals the works of C.S. Lewis regarding the struggles in every person's soul and the internal and external dragons one must slay to find freedom and peace. That from the psychotherapist. Here's the intelligence officer. Dragon Slayers is one of the most profound books I've ever read. I saw myself on nearly every page and felt the letters, were, the letters were written just for me. We are all fighting dragons in some part of our lives. I highly recommend this book to help deal with the struggles in your work, your family, and your heart. I know you will be blessed. I am so excited to have this book out after so many years. And if you would like to get your own copy, you can call us or you, with the number on the screen or you can go to the website and for a gift of any size, we'll send it to you. We just ask that you pay shipping and handling. All right, 
I'm going to say some things right now that will hurt some people, but it's like a doctor hurting us when he has to cut us to fix us, all right? Once upon a time, I had a relative who came to see me and announced, female, and announced that her and her husband didn't want any more babies right away, so the doctor said, well, here, have an IUD. That's an intrauterine device. You see a couple of these images on the screen. This may be one of those shows where you want small children to scoot into the other room, by the way. So the way that the IUD works is it whirls around inside of a woman's uterus, and if she is pregnant, it knocks the new human life off, the uterine wall, okay? Conception occurs in the fallopian tube, the human life grows as it comes down the fallopian tube and then implants on the uterine wall. The IUD is an abortifative device and it causes abortions. It kills a new human life. A woman can have an IUD and not even know that she's pregnant. Every month she could just be aborting a new child, literally, okay? So I said to her, you've got to be kidding. Did the doctor explain to you how this works? Did he explain to you how it works? She said, no. He just told me I won't get pregnant. I said, no, that's not true. You will get pregnant. And if you're pregnant, your baby will die. Now, this lady was a Christian pro-lifer, okay? Did not know the truth. She went immediately to her doctor, had it removed, and the next month, the next month, she was pregnant and had her baby boy. That baby boy would have been dead, flushed down the toilet. Birth control, barrier methods of birth control prevent conception because they keep the sperm and the ovum from ever uniting. The ethics of that are for another day, all right? Children are a blessing. We should always remember that. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. The ethics of birth control aside, the pill, the IUD, the patch, plan B, all of them, prim except for the IUD, all of them primarily work by suppressing ovulation. That means that a woman doesn't ovulate. If she doesn't ovulate, there's no ovum, and hence there's nothing for the sperm to unite with to create a new human life. But the secondary way that it works, that all these drugs work, is to make the uterine lining hostile to a new human life. So a woman could ovulate when she's using the pill or the patch or plan B, and she could conceive, and the baby tries to implant on the uterine wall, and the chemicals inside of this human pesticide drive her into menses, into her cycle, whether she's pregnant or not. And again, her new human life, made in the image of God, the fruit of her parents and her grandparents and her great-grandparents, is flushed away, put in the garbage, put in a landfill. Medical experts estimate that probably 300 million human lives, 300 million, almost the entire population of the United States, have been lost in America from the pill, the patch, Plan B, so when the FDA says that they're happy to give a 15-year-old girl Plan B without mom and dad knowing, without a doctor's supervision, over the counter, this is a criminal act against God, against the girl, against the parents of the girl, and against the baby that might be coming into her womb. It's unconscionable. It's evil. If you know someone who is on the pillar, any one of these chemical devices, gently say to them, did you know how it works? We've got friends who just recently had a baby. She was on the pill. And I was saying to them, you know, don't you want any more kids? Wouldn't this be great? And she ovulated. And even the secondary way that the pill works failed to work. The baby stuck and the chemical didn't work. And now they have a healthy little baby. Thank God. But 300 million other human babies weren't so lucky. 
And most Christians don't even know how these things work. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, talk to you a little, about, a little bit about Big Brother and the FBI. Don't go away. Do you want to have knowledge, wisdom, discernment? If so, you have to read good books, theology, history, books that look at the lives of great men and women. So to help you to become a more effective Christian, a better witness for truth, somebody who can engage in productive conversation that exhorts and edifies those that you speak with, we're gonna do something crazy. We're offering you these seven books for a gift of any size. You just pay for the shipping and handling and then give whatever gift that you can and we will send them to you. But just to make it a little bit more crazy, I will send you a second copy of my three books autographed. You can give them as a gift to your pastor or to a family member and help extend truth and justice in the world. This is While Supplies Last. Welcome back to the program, friend. The Obama administration is ready to give 15-year-olds Plan B, and they're ready to tap into your computers even further. After years of internal debate, the Obama administration and the FBI are now trying to alter the rules about how they can wiretap us in our computers. Now the details are not fully public yet, and then the, other, the next question is, will they go to Congress with this because it's going to cause such a fierce debate? But I want you to just grasp how much we are drifting to a police state. I mean, Russia wiretapped people all the time, the Soviet Union. We saw the Nazis breaking down doors to find Jews. I know that some people think that this is like a, a big leap. And I'm not trying to be alarmist. I'm not trying to be sensational. But what, what we saw up in Boston with armored personnel cars driving through the streets and innocent people forced out of their homes at gunpoint, that was a test run. It really was. I promise you, the Obama administration, Homeland Security, the FBI, state and local law enforcement up in Massachusetts, they were all high-fiving each other with how compliant most people were. And they're probably still high-fiving each other over the lack of outrage over what happened there. Fast forward a few weeks. Now the FBI wants to have much easier access to people's Facebook accounts and various social networking. Of course, for national security. But at what cost, at what cost do you want your, li your, your security? I mean, if you really wanted security day in and day out, we have the technology to put a camera in every house, right? Wasn't it 1984 where the television actually became the device by which the government could view you? How much do you value your security versus how much you value your liberty and your privacy? I mean, that's the issue here. I value liberty. And the truth of the matter is, is that as horrific as it is, People are going to commit crimes. They are. They just are. Now in America today, we have way more crime than we used to because we've turned our backs on God and on his laws. We've turned men into sexual predators and animals. We've turned women into sexual objects. We've made life cheap. So shooting and killing someone is not that big a deal. After all, you can kill your own baby for 300 bucks or 400 bucks. So we have so debased human life, we become violent and barbaric. But I still value liberty. I don't want to place my faith in civil government to the degree that I surrender my liberty and my privacy and my right to how I raise my children 
and your right to how you raise your children. This demonic monster up in Cleveland, you saw that story, that guy who had three women in prison, imprisoned in his house, literally in chains, committing unthinkable and unspeakable acts against them. That man was a demonic and is a demonic monster who deserves to be executed as quickly as possible, okay? He deserves to die as quickly as possible. Convicted by a jury of his peers and sent to his maker. Let God deal with him if God wants to have mercy on him. But he deserves to die. But his crimes were committed in a post 9-11 environment, all right? His crimes were permitted even while we've got security cameras all over Walmart. People are going to commit crimes. And the only way to stop some people from committing these crimes is to have so much surveillance that we simply are the puppets of our political rulers. And as I've been saying again and again in the last few episodes, these evils have come upon us. Plan B, the police state, the intrusion into our chewing gum. Because the Christian community, by and large, the evangelical Christian community has left the playing field politically, and the Catholic community, well, I'll speak to that when I come back from this break. I see you, I see you, okay? I know, I've got to take a break. Buy my book. You, in there, buy my book. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the Republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. Friend, you need to get this book. We won't get fooled again. Listen to this. I came to the conclusion that most folks were left over from the Reagan area who were no longer warriors, but are now either too old or unhealthy and had compromised and become comfortable with the Republican establishment. They turned these organizations pretty much into direct mail fundraising fronts and were making tons of money and living the good life in beautiful mansions. The conservative movement had transformed itself from a very dynamic, principled organization in the Reagan years to a bunch of compromising, useless, and ineffective money-making machines. I'm reading to you from the new blockbuster book, We Won't Get Fooled Again, that names names, shows organizations, shows how they say that they're Christian, but they betray Christ, they betray biblical principles in the public square, and we are funding them. Go to the website, call us on the phone, and order it today. I'll send it to you for free if you want. God bless you. James Madison said, there is no maxim, in my opinion, which is more liable to be misapplied, and which therefore needs more elucidation, than the current, that the interest of the majority is the political standard of right and wrong. Welcome back to the program. Theology has implications, okay? The evangelical community largely, not completely, but largely has abandoned the political playing field because of poisonous theology that called people into retreat and made it a spiritual discipline to abandon the civil sphere. Catholic theology has not been thus corrupted, but many Catholics have. The problem is not with Catholic theology on this point. The problem is with Catholics. All right, you've got people like Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden who are Catholics and yet promoting the brutal murder of unborn babies, shamelessly promoting the decimation of the covenant and sacrament of marriage. All right, the moral of the story is this. I've got I've to go. The moral of the story is we've got to get back into the political realm or America's going to die. The end.
Thank you.